Hello, sad shufflers. Tonight, you're finna wrangle up a fresh new bot. This is Otto. Otto's a small bipedal that hails from a band of robot trainers called Otto DIY. Links to their stuff in the description. Tonight, you're gonna build, wire, and mod your own Otto, and you're gonna code a custom dance routine for it to perform center stage in the bipedal bot battle. Otto's not too crazy on the build code or circuitry fronts, so it's a perfect little bot for novices or scouts. It's time to begin the building process for your newest little friend, Otto. We'll show you us building our wonderful little Otto, but the creators of Otto also made an awesome PDF build guide, which we'll link in the doobly-doo. Step one, go ahead and grab two 180 degree micro servos. We ordered some that were labeled as 120 degrees, but they work just fine. Four servo mounting screws and one auto base. The first step to creating Otto is to secure to his base what will eventually be the servos that control his legs. Use them, screws, TM. Step two, go ahead and grab two cross type servo horns trimmed to look like this, two auto legs and two servo spline screws. Next, make sure your servos are in the middle of their 180 degree range. And then stick the servo horns into those legs and push them onto your servo splines. Secure with the servo screws. Step three, go ahead and grab two of the basic flat type servo horns trimmed to look like this, two 180 degree micro servos, two auto feet, two servo spline screws, and two servo mounting screws. Make sure that these servos are also in the middle of their 180 degree range. and slide each servo into one of Otto's feet. Screw the servo spline screw into the servo and screw the servo mounting screw through the foot and into the servo horn. Step four, all you need is two servo mounting screws. Next up, feed the servo cables through each leg and up into Otto's body, and then push his feet onto his legs. Use your screws to secure both foot servos to the legs through the servo mounting holes. Wow! Step five, grab one Arduino Nano and one Nacro IO shield. If you're rogue, solder a couple of ground and five volt male header pins here. For this step, just make sure that your Nano is pushed into your shield like this. Step six, go ahead and plug in your servos to the shield with the ground wire on the outside. Left leg goes to two, right leg to three, left foot to four, and right foot to five. Step seven, go ahead and grab one ultrasonic sensor, one auto head, and two servo mounting screws. Next up, pop your sensor through Otto's eye holes and then put your shield and Arduino in Otto's head and secure with a couple of screws. Step eight, grab one micro push switch and battery pack combo. If you're rogue, all you need to do is solder these two wires to the switch and crimp female DuPont connectors on the ends of these two wires. We have a link to a handy DuPont connector kit in the description if you wanna do it yourself. Also grab one basic flat type servo horn trimmed to look like this and one servo mounting screw. Mount that switch into Otto's base and use the servo horn and screw to hold it in place. Step nine, go ahead and grab one buzzer. Push the buzzer into the conveniently shaped buzzer hole in Otto's base. Wowza! Step 10, connect the battery box's ground wire to the ground pin on the shield. Next, connect the available red wire coming off of the switch to the VIN pin on the shield. Step 11, go ahead and grab two female to female jumper wires. Next step, connect the jumper wires to your buzzer, keeping track of which wire is connected to the buzzer's positive lead, aka the longer one, and connect the positive wire to signal pin 12 on the shield and the other wire to ground pin 12. Step 12, grab four female to female jumper wires. Use them jumper wires to connect your sensor to your shield. VCC on the sensor goes to voltage pin 9 on the shield, sensor's trig pin goes to signal pin 8, the sensor's echo pin goes to signal pin 9, and the sensor's ground goes to ground pin 8 on the shield. Step 13, now go ahead and push that battery pack into Otto's base. Step 14, party time. Lastly, carefully pop Otto's head onto his base. Kablamo, he's alive!
I do believe it's coding time. So the first step in the coding process is to make sure that we have all the libraries that we could possibly need downloaded. You can check your Arduino IDE's libraries folder to see if you're missing anything. Click on File Explorer and go to Program Files x86, then Arduino, and then Libraries. You should see Adafruit NeoPixel, Bat Reader 9, Enable Interrupt, Oscillator, Auto 9, Auto Serial Command, Timer Free Tone, and US. If you're missing these libraries, here are the steps to get in them. In the Discrizzle, there's a link to AutoDIY's GitHub page. Click on the Libraries Repository, or Repo as we say it in the biz. Hit the Clone or Download button, and then Download Zip. I need a sip of tea. Once it's downloaded, click the little arrow in the downloads bar and hit show in folder. Right click, hit extract all, and go ahead and extract them anywhere since we'll move them in the next step. So we've noticed that in order for everything to work with these libraries, we actually have to select all the individual library folders and move them directly into Arduino's libraries folder. Alrighty, if you didn't have Auto's libraries, you should now. Let's open up the Arduino IDE and make a brand new project for ourselves to settle into. So the first thing we'll want to do for Auto's code is include all the libraries that we'll need for all the littiest dance moves you can imagine. A library is like a fun little bucket of background code that can unlock new commands for your robot. The ones we'll include for this project are servo.h, oscillator.h, and auto9.h. So I'm going to include these libraries by typing hashtag include and then the names of each of the libraries we'll need. So when we include these libraries by typing hashtag include and then the names of each of the libraries we'll need, we're telling the computer that we'll be referencing some of the funky background code that's inside the servo, oscillator, and auto9 buckets. Yeehaw! Next, let's declare an object called auto of type auto9. I'm calling mine auto, but you can call yours whatever you want. Don't worry about the ins and outs of objects right now now, but just know that we have to create this Auto9 object to send commands to Auto. You might remember that when you're using an Arduino, everything in this here setup function runs first and runs top to bottom only once, and then everything in this here loop function runs over and over and over again forever. Inside our setup function, we need to tell the computer a little bit about what pins things are plugged into on our Auto. The Auto library makes this very simple. All you need to do is type auto.init, and then in parentheses, we need to give it that info it so deeply desires. So first I need to give it the pin numbers that our servos are plugged into. So I could just plop those numbers directly in here, but why do that when you can give those pin numbers names and put the names in there? So I'm going to use something called variables to give these pin numbers special names. For right now, you can think of variables as little labeled storage containers. So I'm going to go back up to above the setup loop and declare some variables of type byte. Byte type variables store numbers from 0 to 255. Type byte, and then the name that we want to call our first servo, I'm calling it left leg, then equals, and then the pin number that that servo is connected to, and top it with a semicolon. So byte left leg equals 2 semicolon. I'm going to do the same for the rest of auto servos, so right leg equals 3, left foot equals 4, and right foot equals 5. I'm also going to create variables for the pins that the buzzer and my ultrasonic sensors trig and echo pins are connected to. Alrighty, so back to the auto init command, I'm going to type the names of my servos in the same order I just declared them in, and then false comma zero, and this is just to disable features that we won't be using, and then the name of my buzzer variable, and lastly the names of my ultrasonic sensors trig and echo variables. Don't forget about that semicolon at the end. Next, in my setup function, I'm going to type auto.home parentheses semicolon. And what this special function does is return the servos to their home or default position. Wowza! Then I'm going to pop a quick delay in there just to make sure that everything has time to finish up before it moves on to the next commands. Now this is where we get wild. Hop onto Auto's coding guide PDF, link in the description. Go ahead and scroll down to the last three pages and you can see a ton of information about all the possible singing, moves, and gestures Auto can do. So there are a ton of different functions that can make up a dance routine and some movements actually require you to input certain values. And here the creators of Auto explain what values to input. Wowza! So say I want to make Auto walk forward for three steps. I would type Auto dot the movement I want him to perform, so in this case walk, and then according to the coding guide PDF, I need to pass to it number of steps, amount of time in milliseconds Auto will perform the move for, and direction. So I'm going to say three steps, comma 1000, because that's about how many milliseconds I want this movement to take, comma 1, because with Auto, one can represent the forward or left direction, depending on the movement you're performing, and negative one can represent the backward or right direction, depending on the movement. 
So here's what my dance routine for Otto looked like. So I wanted Otto to walk forward until he senses an object within a few inches of him. And when he senses the object, he breaks out into dance. So I started out with creating a couple variables. One of type Boolean, which means it can either be true or false. And I called it obstacle detected and I set it to false for right now. So then the other variable I created is of type int or integer, which represents a whole number. I'm going to call this one distance and set it equal to zero for right now. So in the loop function, I'm going to set my distance variable equal to the current value that the ultrasonic sensor is sensing in millimeters, aka auto.getDistance. Then I typed, or tope, an if-else statement with the if condition being if the distance that's being sensed is less than 200 millimeters, which is about 8 inches. Then if the condition is met, I want to start the steps of my very epic dance routine. So I'm going to make a dope AF function called dance party, for which I'm doing a forward declaration up top and a definition down below the loop function. First in the dance party, I made Otto walk forward for three steps, then a wee little pause, and then I return Otto to his home or default position. Then Otto performs the happy gesture, quick pause, and then turns two steps to the left. Another quick pause, and then that boy starts moonwalking. Next, I make Otto return to home, and then play that sweet, sweet love gesture. Another quick pause, and then Otto turns a couple steps to the right. Yet another quick pause, and then I make Otto jump, and then he returns to the home position, and then gets back Back to moonwalking, which is really what we should all be doing. Then Otto will relish in the glorious dance victory. Alrighty, so if the condition isn't being met in the loop function, aka if Otto isn't sensing anything, I'm gonna make him walk forward for one step at a time in the else. That's just my Otto's dance routine. You should freestyle to your heart's content. One of our final steps is configuring Otto's board. So click tools and then scroll over board. And Otto uses the Arduino Nano, so that's what we finna select. Next we need to plug in Otto so we can see what COM port or communication port he's connected to. And then open up device manager on your computer by doing the old search and click and click on ports. For me, Otto's COM port popped up under the name of USB serial port. And right here it says what number it is. Head back to the Arduino IDE, click tools, scroll over port, and click on whichever one your auto is using. Now let's upload our code! Pretty simple, just make sure auto is still plugged in and hit this little upload arrow right here. Once the message done uploading pops up down here, you're ready to test and tweak as needed. Quick note, when you upload auto's code, you may see warnings like this about invalid versions for the different libraries, but they can't stop us from dancing so just ignore them. Now, I do believe it's battle time. The rules for the eagerly awaited bipedal bop battle are pretty simple. Choose a bop for Otto to dance to and make Otto perform the best, boppiest, mad, lidiest dance routine ever created. Good luck.